Millions of Britons who use antidepressants face issues with withdrawal when they try and come off the drugs, and for nearly half of them, the symptoms are severe. That's the findings of a new review which contradicts the current clinical guidelines that suggest the symptoms are mild and last just about a week. So now there are calls for changes to those guidelines. Well, joining me now from the University of East London is Professor John Reid, who is one of the authors of that review. Good to have you on and good evening to you. Um, obviously, you want change, but why do you think the current guidance is so wrong? Um, I think there hasn't been very much research on, on this issue, which is a, a, a real shame, until relatively recently. Um, and we are confident that now we, we know the real figures, and we've looked at about 17 studies on the prevalence of withdrawal symptoms. We're confident that the NICE uh, guideline committee will make the necessary changes. That This is particularly important because at the moment people aren't being told about withdrawal effects. Uh, a lot of people will choose not to have them once they know the seriousness of and um, the potential of those effects. And equally important, people who are trying to come off are not getting any support. In fact, they're told very often that these are not withdrawal symptoms. These are the symptoms of their illness re returning. Um, so that's very why well, it's so important to get these guidelines right, so that GPs have the right information that these can last for weeks or months, occasionally years, and they can be very severe, and people really need some, some help with them. Goodness, years. So what sort of symptoms are we talking about? Uh, well, they can range from relatively mild things like dizziness and uh, headaches and so forth, but for some people it's extreme anxiety. I mean, really uh, incapacitating levels of anxiety. Some people talk about brain zaps, which is sort of an electric shock shooting across the head. Um, so it's very, very unpleasant. Insomnia is another another big one. And when you're not doing very well in the first place, not being able to sleep is is very, very uh, disturbing. So they can be they can be very serious, but we, we are confident that um, things are about to change. We've, we've seen the Royal College of Psychiatry welcome this review just, just today. Uh, and we know that NICE guidelines are already reviewing their, their out-of-date uh, guidelines. So we're very confident this is going to be a positive outcome for everybody. So should this prompt not only a rethink on the guidelines and what you are expecting to experience as you come off something, but also whether so many people should be taking them in the first place? Do they work? Should people be on them? And if they do work, why should people come off them? Well, the, the problem is that they, they do work for some people, for, for the majority of people, um, that's really sort of a placebo effect that you've done something so you feel a bit better. But they do help some people. But we're in a ridiculous situation now where one in six people last year were prescribed antidepressants. So this is getting a little bit a little bit bizarre. Um, and, and the increasing rates of prescriptions every year is largely because of people not being able to to get off. So we now have people on for three years, five years, 10 years, um, many of them trying to come off, either because they worked uh, sufficiently, but more often they didn't work and the, uh, and the adverse effects of staying on are, aren't very pleasant. But then when they try to come off, they, they really find it very difficult. People can get off, they need to do it slowly and carefully, and they need the support of, of their GP, which is far more likely to happen once we get the guidelines changed and the GPs will understand that these are indeed withdrawal symptoms that people need help with and not the return of, of their illness. And just quickly, there is a body of thought, isn't there, that, that we are over-medicalising illness, be it mental or physical, and it's much easier to reach for the tablets if you're a busy GP than recommend underfunded counselling or cognitive behaviour therapy or something. Well, I, yes, that's true. I think it's not the GPs, though. It's, it's, it's us as well. We all, we all tend to like a an easy fix. But uh, personally, I think depression tends to be caused by depressing things happening eh, rather than this uh, mythical chemical imbalance that we've never been able to, to find after looking for it for 50 years. Professor John Reid, good to have you on. Very interesting. Thank you very much indeed. Professor there of clinical psychology at the University of East London. Thank you.